We normally think of ourselves as living in a three-dimensional world. We can move in three ways, left or right, up or down, and forwards and backwards. But physics liked adding extra dimensions. Einstein suggested time should be a fourth dimension. Then someone suggested a fifth spatial dimension, and then a sixth. The numbers just kept growing. The extra dimensions were spaces in the universe which we could never perceive. Most were microscopically small, but scientists believed they were really there. String theory had been convinced there were, in total, exactly ten dimensions. You know, if you have a little oscillating string, it has to have enough room to oscillate properly. And uh, when one works this out mathematically, you find it, it just got a very clear answer. It had to be in ten-dimensional space. Ten dimensions. Nine spatial dimensions and one time. Supergravity, though, had been convinced there were exactly eleven dimensions. The equations of supergravity took their simplest and most elegant form when written in this 11-dimensional framework. There was a war between the 10th dimension and the 11th dimension. In the 10-dimensional bandwagon, we had string theorists, hundreds of them, working to tease out all the properties of the known universe from one framework, a vibrating string. And then we had this small band of outcasts, outlaws, working in the 11th dimension. While string theory was in its ascendancy, few took seriously the 11th dimension, but the supergravity guys never gave up hope. I did, at bottom, always feel convinced that eventually 11 dimensions would have its day. I wasn't sure when and I wasn't sure how, but I felt convinced that sooner or later 11 dimensions would be seen to be at the heart of things. But by now, the boot was on the other foot. String theory was in trouble. Its five different versions meant it couldn't be the all-embracing theory physics was looking for. Everything, it seemed, had been tried to save string theory. Well, almost everything. An astonishing announcement was made. There was yet another shockwave that revolutionized the whole landscape. In a final desperate move, the string theorists tried adding one last thing to their cherished idea. They added the very thing they had spent a decade rubbishing. The 11th dimension. Now something almost magical happened to the five competing string theories. The answer turned out to be, and it really was absolutely remarkable, I mean it really is uh, remarkable, it turns out that they were all the same. <laughs> These five string theories turned out to be simply different manifestations of a more fundamental theory. Precisely this theory which we had discarded back in the early 1980s. In the 11th dimension, looking from the mountaintop, looking down, you could see string theory as being part of a much larger reality, the reality of the 11th dimension. <laughs> 